Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shifkumar and in today's video I am going to talk about an application note on creating a PCB antenna by a Texas Instrument. And this is uh, something that I'm trying to you know understand a lot more. I have no clue, no way an, an expert in any antenna design at all, and, but I would love to uh, gain some knowledge and experience. And this was also taken from one of the uh, other videos I'd seen somewhere on YouTube about MATLAB use, uh, has been uh, a tool to design these types of antennas. So yeah, let's have a look. So the application node describes uh, this is their uh, Texas Instrument chip and the whole idea we use to create this PCB antenna and to figure out you know how to design the most optimum um, antenna meanders so that you get um, high gain and uh, it's optimized at 2.4 gigahertz. So it's so the whole idea is that we want to do this design antenna with this restricted space. That's your that's our constraint. Uh, we want to have a VSWR ratio of less than two, uh, and then at 2.4 gigahertz, that's the uh, that's the band at which we're operating at, and the uh, and the um, uh, impedance of this should be 50 ohms. So those are the constraints. Um, or the requirements for the PCB antenna. And what they have done is they have actually explained the actual length and dimensions of this antenna on that PCB. So it's pretty well and pretty clear as to what the um, meander looks like. And the meander is nothing but this wavy type of uh, shape. So in MATLAB, apparently there is something called as the PCB antenna um designer tool and i'm just trying to test it out so what i've done is i've basically taken the exact parameters of the uh from the application note that we see over here and i've basically parameterized the uh, the actual uh antenna over here and the whole idea is to simulate the performance of the antenna and to see you know how accurate uh, or what kind of performance we could get from uh designing it on the pcb so the parameters are L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6. I've just taken that and, you know, this is the, um, um, yeah, the, they have the um, information of how many millimeters each uh, uh, length of this meander is and the width. And based on the positioning, you can, um, you know, basically uh, put in all the values and you'll get this meander that looks like, that kind of looks similar to what's there in the application node. Now, granted that I've taken some of these, uh, there's a video on this. If you search for PCB antenna MATLAB on YouTube, you'll see uh, the MATLAB folks, you know, talking about it and designing it. So you could, so that's where I've got this information from. And I was curious to know that you could even do this on, um, um, in, in, what do you say, in MATLAB. So, so after we've parameterized this whole thing, you basically have a layout like this. And in here, we also can design our stack. So it's kind of like a four layer board. So you have the top layer, you have the dielectric constant, then you have the ground layer. Uh, the ground layer is just below the antenna. And then you have, uh, again, the dielectric. Um, you have two things known as the feed and the via. Uh, we are connected to the ground the feed which should be connected to the actual microcontroller or the rf uh, chip that's basically going to you know transmit and receive the signal um and that's the um that's the stack up on the on what we programmed on that um and matlab but it's the, but we have also got this information in this particular document and what they claim is that if, if you design it this way with these exact parameters, you should be able to, you know, get it at an optimum of 2.4 gigahertz frequency, and uh, and the performance is pretty, it's pretty, uh, you know, uh, it's it's good. So that's something that uh, apparently MATLAB can help us find out. So their 3D field solver or the 2D field solver uh, apparently can help us. Uh, analyze the performance of this antenna so you could do things like impedance and in here it's basically calculating the impedance and based on the parameters that we have inputted it's not exactly the same but um you can say 2.4 2.5 is where 
the reactance is zero and at 50 ohms somewhere around here you have like 2.45 um is the is the frequency and then we, and we're looking at 50 ohm impedance at 2.45 um gigahertz so that's kind of what this performance does um you have the s parameter which again shows you the gain um at uh at 2.45 as the maximum gain um there also like analysis of how the antenna would behave and all now a lot of these parameters i myself need to really truly understand like how does it improve the performance of the antenna uh, but this is something that i'm just being playing around with to see you know uh, if I'm designing antennas for wireless communication, uh, I would once simulate these antennas, and I thought this was a pretty interesting way of doing it. So it shows you how the um, the current density is. This is the amp. Amp. I'm not too sure what the unit is. A amp per meter. Um, so this would be. So there'll be more current in the red part, and then there'll be less current in the in the blue parts so that's what i think this what this means the 3d pattern is pretty interesting because if you do like say overlay antenna it shows you exactly how the antenna if this is the pcb it'll show you how the waves and the electromagnetic radiation is you know taking place um right through the pcb uh, showing that you know because the the feed is on the leftmost side of the of the of the PCB. The antennas uh, the um, feed is more on the left hand side, so the radiation is you know more from that side. That's my understanding at least. Um, it's a it shows you all these graphs to better understand whether your uh, whether the performance of your um, antenna is optimum. Um, and then it has the azimuth graphs and other things which I am yet to figure out. So this is something that um, I, you know, I just basically parameterized based on this application note uh, and to get a sense of, you know, how do you design antennas on the PCB, especially if you do not want to add weight to your drone or weight to your device. You want everything to be on the PCB stack and if the PCB can radiate and receive signals, uh, why would you not want to do that? But to, in order to do that, you'd want to create and design um, an optimum antenna. And generally speaking, Wi-Fi is at 2.4 gigahertz, Bluetooth is at around 2.4 gigahertz. Um, so at this frequency range, there are a lot of protocols that operate. Um, so this antenna would be quite compatible. This antenna design and the meander would be compatible with many uh, protocols within this with that fit this uh, frequency range. Um, so just to go a little bit more detailed into how this has been done. So in MATLAB, you can basically go to, uh, let me just, so in MATLAB, you can basically go to app and then somewhere in the app, you should look at the PCB design, antenna design toolbox. Um, and then once in the PCB antenna design toolbox, the site will be basically a parametric, um, you can feed in all your parameters. Uh, all of this information, you can take it directly from the application node and you populate this particular antenna and the meander. Once you do that, um, then you would want to basically create the PCB stack up. And that was the second part that I did. Uh, you basically put the board and the top metal, uh, then you have the dielectric ground dielectric. And after that, you can also export it as a PC, as a Gerber file. So you can actually print the, print the PCB from here and which I've already done over here. Uh, so I've generated the Gerber files and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, but what I do want to also talk about is um, they can also optimize the performance. So if you want the, if you click on the optimize tool bu um, button and you want to optimize for a very specific gain or for a bandwidth and saying, you know, I want it to be exactly at 2.4 gigahertz. That means you want to have a minimum bandwidth. Um, you can set in the parameters that you want, set in the, um, the limitations because you could have that exact bandwidth but you also have size constraints. You wanted to fit in a very specific size, so you can put that out here. And at the same time, you also might have like broader constraints that are not dimensionally oriented, but it's more like, I want to maximize gain. I don't want it to be at 2.4 gigahertz, but the signal is very weak. Uh, you want to maximize the gain as well. Um, so those things, you can put in all the constraints and then it'll optimize it for you. There is 
uh, in the video when you talk about when MATLAB, um, one of the representatives talks about how what's the optimization algorithm behind it, uh, the SADEA or the surrogate optimization method. Talk briefly about as to what's what it's doing underneath the hood, and it's supposed to be pretty a uh, cutting edge technology in terms of you know optimization for wireless radios. So it's uh, it's a um, it's a pretty powerful to the to the uh, you know field solver to optimize your antenna and its design based on the parameters that you're looking for. So that's the optimizer uh, function over here. All right. So on the right side uh, is the actual PCB. So the PCB stack up top layer is the is the um, is the metal which is the antenna the copper antenna, and then you have the dielectric. Okay. So let's look at the Gerber file right now. So what I'm going to do is take this Gerber file and in here once you when you click export in here when you click say export Gerber file it tells you what you want to name your writer. You can choose how you want your PC, the Gerber file naming conventions to be um, to be outputted. I'm using the May Hey writer that's because in that demonstration they use this and the PCB connector is an SMA connector um, and when you so what I'm going to do is uh, basically uh, open the Gerber file which is the may have labs and here we have the PCB and on the back side is the SMA connector well ideally you don't since you have we have optimized the antenna with this particular spacing and this particular width you don't I don't think you'd want to have this SMA, which is pretty big, connector right on the antenna. It'll, it'll definitely affect the performance of the antenna and probably not won't even work. So that's the reason why it's at a position or at a place where it doesn't interfere with the design of the antenna. And you most likely could fabricate this board and then feed your output of your RF microcontroller or a processor that has RF capabilities and feed that through this, with this SMA. So that's the uh, that's what uh, uh, this can generate. So I want to also go a little deeper into the actual um, application node in the sense that uh, yeah, so this is the USB dongle. Um, I believe this is for Bluetooth. Um, I don't think this is for Wi-Fi, but they both operate at the same frequency, so it doesn't matter. You're optimizing for a frequency, and then the protocol um, would would be based on what your receiver and trans. Uh, and transmitter um, how they want to communicate so um, so the so the application node is on the CC 2511 and I thought I would you know build up bring up the um, evaluation board CC 2511 user guide that basically demonstrates this uh, the same thing with the application node for the antenna is described in ANO 43 and this says the USB dongle um, and these are the PCB antennas so one of the things with PCB antennas as mentioned you know you save on size you save on cost you save on um, a lot on bulkiness so and it can be and it can be snug very well into um, into the chassis of your drone or robot and would have the wireless capability so that's uh, an advantage where it could just be fabricated on the PCB itself and yeah you could also buy this to um, to see and test it out but the, the good part about um, one thing I would want to know though especially with MATLAB is now that I've designed this PCB um, I cannot take it to my PCB editor or a design studio uh, or, or a you know a PCB design edit uh, software to basically now add my microcontroller or the RF uh, chip and connect it to it. I'm not too sure they have that capability of you know designing the antenna over here and bringing it back to the PCB software, adding all the components and then again simulating. I believe there are other tools that might be able to do that. Maybe it's something like Ansys where I can take the whole PCB and optimize for radio frequency or I think even uh, um, SI wave from uh, Keysight ADS. I am not to show the capabilities of MATLAB, but if, um, you know, if if that's a capability that's in the workings or it already has, I am not aware of. 
but that would be very awesome primarily being because matlab is i think almost every engineer starts using matlab and matlab is a is a very professional tool especially in the automobile sector where they you know use the control system toolbox aerospace toolbox um even in in aerospace it's it's still a very practical application in many industries but it's not very well known in i don't think in signal integrity and machine learning and maybe in some forms of robotics python is the is is the for robotics and scripting you use python especially for machine learning and when it comes to pcb layout you're looking at altm and then you're looking at maybe like ansys or keysight you wouldn't think matlab is the tool for for this type of 2d field solving and 3d field solving <laughs> but they have these capabilities apparently um so but in order to make it more practical i think it's important for it to be compatible between other softwares as well so that you can take your design from one pcb software and bring it over here to analyze the design and performance give suggestions or make even corrections to the pcb and then vice versa you know send it back to the to the designs design software where the pcb is if that can be done that would be awesome because right now i don't know what's the like if i say send this for fabrication um i have to print kind of two boards now i have to print this is the antenna board and then i have to print the board where the actual uh chip is to you know send and receive um the signal so so that's something that i wanted to talk about so nevertheless it's a handy tool um i think more important than the tool itself i'm pretty uh, happy with you know this kind of information has been is is public it's well known i'll put all these links in the description below where you can have a look at or read this application note on how to design a pcb antenna for 2.4 gigahertz um right you know it's uh, all the information is out there yeah and that's it for today um if you want more details on this you can just go on google or on youtube and search for you know pcb design antenna matlab there's a video on it by mathworks um i think it's on a different channel but the matlab matlab uh, representatives are and that talking about this tool to get a detail as to how they parameterize this and that's where i got this information from and i did the exercise myself so that's about it um right now i am stuck somewhere yeah so that's how you you know you can export it as well so that's there um another thing i wanted to talk about which is you, it generates all these variables for you um so you can even create a script so it's, it's kind of like programmatically you know designing all of this stuff um i'm not too sure it'll be it's an handy way to do this like if i open one of these things it'll uh, it it talks about you know all the parameters that are gone into uh designing the antenna it probably is important when you're doing the 2d field solving but uh or the 3d field solving in the back end but this is a script that is also quite readable talking about the dimensions of the antenna and and the the stack up and what the materials of the stack up uh then these are all the dimensions and then it probably would use all of this information to um analyze the antenna performance yep that's it for me um i thought i would do this small little video and um, if you find this valuable uh do subscribe um i am constantly focusing on you know working on uh the hardware level side of things right now and then moving more into edge computing very shortly for ai um once you know a lot of the basics of um like you know things like motor control radio control uh designing the hardware for it um setting that that infrastructure the foundations of the hardware which is which is pretty much uh, it's uh, it's complicated but there's so much resources out there that it just takes time to learn and absorb that information practice it and make it work so there's not much innovation per se but there's a lot of digestion of information and that's where you know i'm currently at and until next time thank you all